Hello, it's Willie from the Ozarks, and it's May 11th, and we're ready for Lesson 131 in a Course in Miracles workbook for students. Lesson 131, No One Can Fail Who Asks to Reach the Truth, or No One Can Fail Who Asks to Reach the Truth. Yesterday, it is impossible to see two worlds. Just a couple things I'd like to mention about that. Uh, fear has made everything you think you see. Fear has made everything you think you see. At one place later on, he's going to say, what would, what would uh, we use the eyes for if we didn't uh, believe in sin? To something to that effect. But the idea is that uh, we've made this world where death seems to be the way that life occurs and that uh, pain seems real and uh, that just seems to be the natural law that everything has to die. But he's saying here that fear has made everything you think you see. All separation, all distinctions, and the multitude of differences you believe make up the world. They are not there. They are not there. Love's enemy has made them up. But love has no enemy. And so they have no cause, <laughs> no being, and no consequence. They can be valued, but remain unreal. They can be sought, but they cannot be found. Wow. So the things you see, uh, you know, remember, it's impossible to see two worlds. And we're looking for the world beyond the one with, that we see with these eyes. The one that we touch with this, with this hand, <laughs> with your hand. Anyway, this world. There is another world that's real that, that is uh, it's really here now. And we're going to learn to see it. It is impossible to see two worlds... Um, uh, the, the real and the unreal are all there is to choose between. Nothing more than this. Okay. So we, can either, we either take what's real or we take an illusion of what is real and uh, think that's real. Devote our minds to finding only what is real is what he's encouraging us to do. And we were to begin our search yesterday by asking God for the strength that's beyond our own to recognize that it's impossible to see two worlds. I know these almost seem like preposterous concepts to the untrained mind, but we're, you're going to find that uh, you're going to be very, very thankful if you, if you stick with this, that it's going to be proven to you. It, it'll be uh, a proof that may not be to be able to be scientifically verified, but you'll be able to verify it. <laughs> it'll be, become very meaningful by the, uh, by the, um, the results that you get by watching and observing. It is impossible to see two worlds. You're supposed to begin your uh, six five-minute meditations, which, did you do that? Were you able to do that? Spend five minutes, six times throughout the day telling the people around you, okay, I've got to be quiet now for five minutes. And, you know, he's, he's wanting us to, to get good at going into this quiet place. So he's breaking that 30 minutes up into five opportunities through the day. Uh, it is impossible to see two worlds. Let me accept the strength God offers me and see no value in this world that I may find my freedom and deliverance. Um, let's just look at this last part yesterday. Dismiss temptation easily today. Whenever it arises, merely by remembering the limits on your choice. What is the limits on your choice? Either what's real or what's not real. What, what feels peaceful? Or what feels agitation, what causes agitation inside. You had a thought that God wouldn't think. When you feel that agitation, it should be the dashboard light that comes on. It says, up, oh, time to be at peace. You thought a thought that God wouldn't think. 
The unreal or the real, the false or true, is what you see and only what you see. Perception is consistent with your choice, and hell or heaven comes to you as one. You know, the agitation of hell or the peace of heaven in every choice. Except a little part of hell is real, and you've damned your eyes and cursed your sight. And what you will behold is hell indeed, but you don't have to stay there. As soon as you feel hell, think, ah, oh, I must be thinking thoughts that are not loving. I need to return to kindness and to consideration, to, 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 to gratefulness, to uh, thankfulness. All right? Uh, yet the release of heaven still remains within your range of choice to take the place of everything that hell would show to you. All you need say to any part of hell, whatever form it takes, is simply this. It is impossible to see two worlds. I seek my freedom and deliverance, and this is not a part of what I want. <laughs> I see myself saying that, lot, and that is not a part of what I really want. <laughs> okay, hey, let's uh, before we read our lesson, lesson 131, uh, no one can fail who asks to reach the truth. Uh, got these, uh, these roses in. They are so beautiful. Uh, Gave them away to a lot of mothers yesterday, and uh, Jessica and I went around just giving them away to, to some of the mothers that we saw. Um, this is the one I wanted to show you today, though. This, do you know what that is? That is a, a local plant here in the Ozarks, and that's just the top part of it. They, they stand about three foot tall. Um, not many leaves, but that's those leaves. That is, who knows it? That is a spider wart. Spider wart. A spider wart has uh, some some value in it. For I've, I was looking at it. It says that it's good for insect stings. I expect probably make a, a paste out of the, the leaf or the petal and, um, and put it on an insect sting, I say. Bee sting and whatnot, maybe. Uh, the root that says good, make a tea out of it, make a laxative. All right, let's read our lesson, 131. No one can fail who asks to reach the truth. And you might know this one, no one, if you've done through the course before, no one can fail who seeks to reach the truth. That's the foundation for inner peace's uh, way of saying that. I'm not sure exactly why ask and seek, they both mean the same thing. But failure is all about you while you seek for goals that cannot be achieved. You look for permanence in the impermanent, for love where there is none, for safety in the midst of danger, immortality within the darkness of the dream of death. Who could succeed where contradiction is the setting of his searching and the place to which he comes to find stability? Paragraph 2. Goals which are meaningless are not attained. There is no way to reach them. For the means by which you strive for them are meaningless as they are. Who can use such senseless means and hope through them to gain in anything? Where can they lead? And what could they achieve that offers any hope of being real? 3. Pursuit of the imagined leads to death, because it is the search for nothingness. And while you seek for life, you ask for death. You look for safety and security while in your heart you pray for danger and protection for the little dream you made. <laughs> Paragraph four. Yet searching is inevitable here. For this you came and you will surely do the thing you came for. But the world cannot dictate the goal for which you search unless you give it power to do so. Otherwise, you still are free to choose a goal that lies beyond the world and every worldly thought and one which comes to you from an idea relinquished yet remembered. An idea relinquished, one that you forgot, but remembered. Old yet new, a new thought that you knew before. An echo of a heritage forgot, yet holding everything you really want. Paragraph 5. 
uh, like a like a song that you you knew when you were young and hadn't heard it for a long time, and then you heard a little melody of it. You go, oh, I know that song. Well, that's what we're remembering, the eternal song of our own soul. <laughs> Paragraph five, be glad that search you must. Be glad that search you must. Be glad as well to learn you search for heaven and must find the goal you really want. You search for heaven and you must find the goal you really want. No one can fail to want this goal and reach it in the end. No one can fail. No one can fail to want this goal and reach it in the end. God's son cannot seek vainly, though he tried to force, delay, deceive himself, and think that it is hell he seeks. When he is wrong, he finds correction. When he wanders off, he's led back to his appointed task. Reminds me of the old adage that a lot of metaphysicians say, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. <laughs> I love this. When he is wrong, he finds correction. The Holy Spirit's going to show you. You can't beat your head up against the wall of going the wrong way for eternity. When he wanders off, he's led back to his appointed task. Paragraph 6. No one remains in hell, for no one can abandon his creator nor affect his perfect, timeless, and unchanging love. No one remains in hell. He's not saying that hell isn't real. He's just saying, well, he is saying hell isn't real, but it's as real as you believe it is. Um, no, no one remains in hell. There's the key. For no one can abandon his creator nor affect his perfect timeless, and unchanging love. You will find heaven. Everything you seek but this will fall away, yet not because it has been taken from you. It will go because you do not want it. <laughs> you will reach the goal you really want as certainly as God created you in sinlessness. <laughs> Paragraph 7. Why wait for heaven? You can have it now. Why wait for heaven? It is here today. Time is the great illusion. It is past or in the future. Yet this cannot be. If it is where God wills his son to be, how could the will of God be in the past and yet to happen? What he wills is now, without a past and wholly futureless. It is as far removed from time as is a tiny candle from a distant star or what you choose from what you really want. Eight, heaven remains your one alternative to this strange world you made and all its ways, its shifting patterns and uncertain goals, its painful pleasures and its tragic joys. God made no contradictions. What denies its own existence and attacks itself is not of him. He did not make two minds, with heaven as the glad effect of one, and earth the other sorry outcome that is heaven's opposite in every way. God made no contradictions. He did not make two minds with heaven as the glad effect of one and earth the other sorry outcome that is heaven's opposite in every way. In other words, God made what's real and it's never been not real and it's still going on. But you're living a dream where you think you could be separated from love, from God. And so you believe in what you've made. But now we get to wake up from the dream with these simple exercises and a willingness and the help of heaven, obviously. <laughs> Paragraph 9. God does not suffer conflict, nor is his creation split in two. How could it be his son could be in hell when God himself established him in heaven? Could he lose what the eternal will has given him to be his home forever? Could you? Could you lose what the eternal will of God has willed to be your home forever? 
Let us not try longer to impose an alien will upon God's single purpose. He is here because he wills to be, and what he wills is present now, beyond the reach of time. Isn't that a nice way to look at it? Paragraph 10. Today we will not choose a paradox in place of truth. How could the Son of God make time to take away the will of God? He thus denies himself and contradicts what has no opposite. He thinks he made a hell opposing heaven and believes that he abides in what does not exist, while heaven is the place he cannot find. <laughs> Leave foolish thoughts like these behind today and turn your mind to true ideas instead. <laughs> 11. No one can fail who asks to reach the truth. And it is truth we ask to reach today. We will devote ten minutes to this goal three times today, and we will ask to see the rising of the real world to replace the foolish images that we held dear with true ideas arising in the place of thoughts which have no meaning, no effect, and neither source nor substance in the truth. Wow, can you say that to yourself, that I want to see the real and let the unreal go? If it's not loving, if it doesn't bring you supreme joy and peace, it's not real. Let it go. And, how, and he's going to give us some really good technique for letting it go here. This we acknowledge as we start upon our practice periods. Begin with this. I ask to see a different world and think a different kind of thought from those I made. The world I seek I did not make alone. The thoughts I want to think are not my own. They're not just me separate from God thinking them. That's when they're not, not mine alone in that respect. The thoughts I truly think are one with God. For several minutes, watch your mind and see, although your eyes are closed, the senseless world you think is real. Okay, so take them a minute and you close your eyes and watch your mind a minute with your eyes closed and see the senseless world you think is real. Review the thoughts as well which are compatible with such a world and which you think are true. Okay, then let them go and sink below them to the holy place where they can enter not. Okay, you first off start seeing this world of uh, illusion where pain is real and death seems real and time and space seem real and, and you seem anxious and tried. But then he says, then let them go and sink below them to the holy place where they can enter not. There is a door, mm, secret door. There is a door beneath them in your mind, which you could not completely lock to hide what lies beyond. Wow, we're going to find this door, this trap door underneath. We're going to sink down below the 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 thinking of the world that is not real. We're going to seek for that door. Paragraph 15, seek for that door and find it. But before you try to open it, <clears throat> but before you try to open it, remind yourself no one can fail who asks to reach the truth. And it is this request you make today. Nothing but this has any meaning now. No other goal is valued now nor sought. Nothing before this door you really want. And only what lies past it do you seek. Mm, you want to go through that door, don't we? Down below all of the turmoil, we're going to sink down below all the, the waves and tumult. And we're going to find this door. Put out your hand and see how easily the door swings open when you remind yourself that no one can fail who asks to reach the truth. Put out your hand and see how easily the door swings open with your one intent to go beyond it. Angels light the way. Angels light the way. <laughs>
so that all darkness vanishes and you're standing in a light so bright and clear that you can understand all things you see. A tiny moment of surprise, perhaps, will make you pause before you realize the world you see before you in the light reflects the truth you knew and did not quite forget in wandering away in dreams. Wow. Love to talk about that, but this is a long lesson and you just need to spend some time contemplating these, that, that method of exiting this unreal world. You cannot fail today, 17. You cannot fail today. There walks with you the Spirit heaven sent you that you might approach this door someday and through his aid slip effortlessly past it to the light. Today, that day has come. Today, that day has come. Woo! Today, God keeps his ancient promise to his holy son, as does his son remember his to him. This is a day of gladness, for we come to the appointed time and place where you will find the goal of all your searching here and all the seeking of the world, which ends together as you pass beyond the door. And the last paragraph, remember often that today should be a time of special gladness and refrain from dismal thoughts and meaningless laments. Salvation's time has come. Today is set by heaven itself to be a time of grace for you and for the world. If you forget this happy fact, remind yourself with this. Today I seek and find all that I want. My single purpose offers it to me. No one can fail who asks to reach the truth. No one can fail who asks to reach the truth. 